Hello, so this is my first ever video on this channel. Um, I've had to do quite a few takes on this already because I keep mucking on my words as I go along. So hopefully this is the take that I'll use. Um, so I'm a first year at uni. Uh, I'm currently on my summer break uh, before I go into my second year in uh, September slash October. And this has been something that I've wanted to do for a while. Um, I've had the idea kind of for the past year um, and I kind of think if I don't do it now in this break I don't really see when I'm going to get better opportunity. Um, so I'm going to start with um, A-level maths mainly because I've been lucky enough to be quite comfortable with maths as a subject um, despite not going to the greatest schools um, uh, growing up I was lucky to have um, one or two good teachers when I was younger and um, I know everyone else can't really say the same um, so I'm quite fortunate for that um, and that allowed me to get an A star at A level um, so that's kind of why I have the confidence in order to do this I did some tutoring on the side over the past year and I really really enjoyed it um, so kind of the hope of this is that I can increase my outreach slightly and hopefully I can help some people that were in my position um, just a year ago um, so just some general housekeeping. So for exams, um, for pure, for A level, you have uh, two pure exams, paper one and paper two. Um, they're both two hours, they're both 100 marks. You have a calculator uh, for both of them, unlike GCSE for one of the papers you didn't. Um, paper one and paper two are the exact same thing. There is no difference between them. I, I, about a few hours before my mocks, for some reason, I had this idea that paper one was year one and paper two was year two. Please don't make that mistake. Um, they are literally the exact same. You don't have to vary your revision strategy for them um, at all. And uh, for AS, uh, you only have one pure paper, which is paper one. It's 100 marks. It's two hours. Again, you have a calculator. It's all the year one content uh, condensed um, into one paper. Um, so in terms of content, um, the year one content, isn't actually terrible um, most of it looking back is actually pretty much just GCSE revision I mean I'm looking at the contents now chapter one two three five nine eleven and ninety percent of ten you could probably attempt the questions at the beginning of year 12 there's no new concepts that are introduced um, the questions are just a tiny bit harder. It's usually those questions that you get towards the end of your GCSE exams. All of the A-level questions are like that, but you'll have so much practice that that won't be too big of an issue. Um, with year two, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are a few chapters that, for me, I struggled with quite a lot. Um, I'm okay with them. I was okay with them towards the end of my A-levels after I had a lot of time with them. Um, you will be able to pull through it if you put in the effort. Um, my best tip in order to get through those chapters is to 100% understand year one and how it works. Basically, everything that you do in year two is basically just an extension of year one content. The worst thing that you're going to want to do is go into year two without a fully developed understanding of how year one works. If you fully understand year one and all of its content, year two will be so much easier. That is probably my, that is 100% my main tip um, for you going into this, is before you go into year two, make sure you 100% understand year one. It will make year two a lot more easier for you. In terms of resources, one of the most important things that you have access to that I don't think students appreciate enough is the spec. Now, in fairness, I think the textbook, the NXL Pearson textbook, I think does quite a good job of sticking to the spec. It doesn't teach you a bunch of stuff that you just don't need to know. But basically what the spec does is it basically tells you everything you could be examined on and everything that you won't be examined on uh, specifically. It's really, really useful, especially if you're struggling with a particular chapter. It will tell you how much depth you need to go into it and it will tell you at what point you need to learn and at what point you, it is beyond the uh, what the course or what the exam could ask you. I think that's really good so you don't get stressed over details that you actually can't be examined on. So, for example, um, of something that I found in particular in the sequences section, there are two proofs that the specification mentions 
um, that you need to know. And that's what the specification is really good at, is because you can now go into the exam knowing that you need to know those two proofs sort of um, on the top of your head. Um, there are other parts of the spec in which it specifically says that you don't need to know a proof. So that, again, is very useful um, because then you're not going to get stressed over learning something you don't need to know. Um, past papers are obviously useful. Obviously, everyone knows that from um, GCSE. Um, the one thing I would say about past papers uh, for uh, this course is I didn't use past papers for a source of exam style questions, mainly because, as I'll mention in a sec, the Pearson Edexcel book is really, really good. It has hundreds of realistic exam style questions to the point where you have such a good supply. You don't need to rely on the past papers um, for the exam style questions. What the past papers are really, really good at is helping you assess how good you are at timings, which is a really understated uh, skill that you need to know for your exams. Um, because uh, doing exam style questions out of the textbook will not be able to help you understand how much time you have for questions, um, whether you're good enough with timings, how much time you have at the end to check your questions if you have any. Um, you only have a finite supply of past papers and it is only a finite supply it's not endless and um, there is not loads of them for the current specification to the point where i actually only used past papers i saved them all for my mocks and for my exams to revise from um, i thought that sort of the end of topic tests and uh, just general exams that i got in class from my teachers were enough in order for me to make an assessment about my timings and how good i was at them um, I would say if you have a teacher that does, for some odd reason does not um, set you many exam style kind of tests, maybe dip into one or two of the past paper supply to get a good idea of how good you are with timings. Because once again, it's a really understated um, point with the exams that you need to be good at and you need to understand how good you are. Right? You need to practice with it. So in terms of the book, um, as I said, I think this is actually probably the best textbook that I've ever used, um, the Pearson NXL one, mainly because it has so many realistic exam questions, like hundreds of them. There are two types of questions in the book. There are the E questions and there are the EP questions. In my opinion, you need to do all of those questions. I think that is really good to help reconsider your knowledge. There are so many questions. I think that will give you so much experience of how to answer exam style questions. I would highly recommend you do that. Um, in terms of the way that I did it, I did all the E and the EP questions um, from the exercises and the mixed exercises as I went along with how my teacher was teaching the course because that was really helpful to um, kind of reconsider my knowledge. Um, with the review exercises, I actually saved them for my exams and mocks. So I had a good supply of exam style questions to do for revision for those tests. Um, in terms of the other questions, um, this is sort of a, a topic, this is sort of which I think you're going to have to make an assessment of in terms of how much you want to do. I think a lot of people would uh, benefit from doing all the questions. I think there are other people who would actually only uh, do the E and the EP questions. So the problem with the questions that aren't E or EP is mainly that they are not realistic for what you're going to be asked in an exam. And they are also at certain points um, for certain chapters. I actually didn't do them for um, a few chapters because I thought they were a bit too easy. And I kind of thought I wanted to spend my time revising uh, on some of the other E and EP questions. Um, this is kind of something that's kind of up to you in terms of how confident you are with maths and how confident you are with the individual chapters, whether you want to just do the E or the EP questions or whether you want to do all the questions. My best advice is and how I assigned it. So in particular, on the top of my head, year two differentiation, year two integration and year two vectors. I did all of the questions because I remember I tried straight away to do the E and the EP questions and I was so out of my depth because I really struggled with it. So what I did, I went back to the beginning and I did all of the questions to help me build up slowly for those chapters that I particularly struggled with. Um, there was uh, there was some more that I can't remember on the top of my head, but I think that might be the best way to approach it is when you're looking at the questions, look at the E and the EP questions. 
If you are just looking at it and you have no idea what it's talking about, or if you haven't attempted the questions and you really struggle with it, that is probably a sign that you should try all of the questions in the exercises to help you kind of build up your skills uh, slowly. So therefore you can have more confidence when you attempt those questions. Really quick, another resource that I want to talk about is Dr. Frost. I know that a lot of teachers um, use this as part of their lesson, but I think on its own, it's also very useful. Um, so basically he does slides on all the uh, A-level content. Um, I really like it. I found it really useful um, during my A-levels. The biggest limitation with it really is um, I know a lot of people don't like PowerPoint. I know a lot of people like videos and actual kind of like um, kind of teaching in that way. Um, but I would say if there are topics that you struggle with, definitely look at his um, PowerPoints. Um, I use them a lot during my A-levels. They really helped me. Just a couple of other pre-notes. Firstly, on note-taking, um, I'm pretty sure every person at A-level um, will take notes to a certain degree. Um, for maths, I wrote loads of notes, and I put them in folders, and I did it for each topic, and that was really, really useful for me. And I would say that notes are one of, if not the best revision strategy when they're done properly. The problem is, so many people that I knew, and I'm even talking like possibly the majority of people, were so awful at taking notes sometimes. I, I, so many people, I, I've heard stories about this, of people that just copy from the textbook to make their notes. It's such a waste of time. It's unbelievable, and that could be spent so much more productively. In terms of note-taking, my best advice for taking notes is not to make them formal. I make my notes very personal and very informal. It's sort of like I'm having a conversation with myself a lot of the time. A lot of my notes I find that it's also it's sort of like I'm talking to myself. Um, especially for some of the more difficult topics, some of my notes are almost like a diary. It is literally just having a conversation with myself and that really helps cement the knowledge in your mind. It's quite a difficult thing to explain. I might include um, some of my, I guess you could say, kind of more interesting notes. Um, for certain topics um, as a picture but I would say give it a go because it really helped me in terms of get this knowledge in my mind um, the other thing I did in my notes as well is if I was in the textbook and I came across the question that I got wrong and I found it quite an interesting question and I thought that the question is most likely a very realistic exam style question I would write down the question and the answer in my notes while fully annotating it as well, showing where I went wrong and not to make that again. I thought that was a really useful technique as well. Um, in terms of other tips that I would have just overall for the course, first of all, the best way for you to go from kind of, I guess, sh struggling at maths to improving at maths um, massively is to learn from every mistake that you do. I Throughout my whole two years at A-level, I never got an answer wrong and then I just moved on without figuring out why. Every single answer that I got wrong, I put in a lot of time in order to figure out exactly where I went wrong so I could write it down in my notes so I would never make it again. I think that is such a useful tip. It really helps me a lot because that kind of stops you from making the same mistake over and over again. Um, additionally as well, um, something at the start of year 12, um, that I sort of debated in my mind, but now looking back, um, I should have never debated. You're going to need the white Casio class with um, calculator, the FX 991EX. You, um, the calculator that you use at GCSE, uh, it's, I think it's a black calculator or, or grey or something like that. It's a powerful calculator. It is nothing compared to the Casio calculator. You 100% need that. There is no debate about it. Um, there is uh, certain things that it does that the other calculator just cannot do. So 100% get that white class with one. Um, in terms of the calculator, another massive bit of advice I would say, and possibly the best bit of advice I would say from going through maths and doing questions is don't get over reliant on your calculator for mental maths. So once I was going through it over the two years, I never used my calculator for mental maths. Even for quite hard mental maths, I remember I was doing um, quite complicated multiplication um, 
um, by writing it out with the grid technique or something like that. And every single kind of um, mental maths that I had to do um, through algebra, I always did it in my head. I really hated this at the beginning because I was making so many stupid mistakes. But over the two years, my mental maps got so good because I didn't get reliant in putting every single kind of sum into my calculator. This is really, really useful for two reasons. One, for algebra, it's useful because you will not be able to use a calculator for every single sum because it's just ridiculous. There are so many little things you have to do, and it stops you from making those small mathematical mistakes that you will make if over the two years you practice and practice your mental maths through doing these exam style questions. The other massive, massive um, advantage to it is one of the most common ways that people melt all their time away in exams is putting every single thing into a calculator, like every single mental math sum. Um, when you get away from that and you are confident enough to do good mental maths in your head, you will you will zoom through the paper a lot more quicker. You will do questions so much quicker because you're not plugging everything into your calculator. It takes a lot of time. Um, so that is definitely um, probably the best tip that I would say is to improve your mental maths via doing that.